How does alcohol impact swimming performance? In this video, I'm gonna share with you why it matters, what alcohol is, how it impacts your performance, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna share a few different ways that you can think about hydration before, during, and after your swim. Now, I personally do not drink alcohol, and I've never had alcohol in my entire life, actually, but this video is factually based in science, and that's where we're gonna start. So chemically, alcohol is called ethanol, and the chemical formula is C2H6O. That's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it is an intoxicating agent that is found in beer, wine, and liquor. There are three different types of this, and that is methanol, isopropanol, and of course, ethanol. So you might be familiar with these in disinfectants, pesticide, and a type of fuel. Now it is produced by fermentation of yeast, sugars, and starches. Now here's why this matters. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant that slows down the brain and results in impaired cognitive function. And in a little bit, we're actually gonna talk about how long alcohol can stay in your system and the different impacts it has on your body. So alcohol does not affect everyone equally. And there's a lot of different factors that actually contribute to how alcohol can impact you as a person. Yes, you watching this video, we're all different and it impacts everyone a little bit differently. There are a few factors including depending on the person and the environment. For example, people who are larger than others, male, female, muscle composition, fat composition, and of course your environment can impact how your body responds to this chemical entering your system. Now I know a lot of people are wondering this question is, how long does alcohol actually stay in your system? And that really contributes to how it impacts your body. So a few different areas of your body. One is your blood, and it can stay in your blood for up to six hours. Alcohol can stay in your breath for 12 to 24 hours. It can actually be traced in your urine for up to 72 hours. And it can be in your saliva for 12 to 24 hours. And I didn't know this, but alcohol can actually be traced in your hair for up to 90 days. That's a pretty long time. The half-life for alcohol is approximately four to five hours. That's basically how long it takes for your body to metabolize the alcohol in your bloodstream, which means it can take about 24 to 30 hours to actually get rid of the alcohol in your system, depending on your body, of course. That's why we can say it actually takes up to potentially 48 hours until your body is no longer feeling the effects of alcohol, and it could be even more because of some of the things that we're gonna talk about. So before we talk about hydration, which is super, super important, let's talk about the performance side of things, because that's what we're all about. We're trying to get better at swimming. We want to improve our performance. We want to improve our health. So it's really important that we understand chemically what this is doing to our body and the different components that go into that. So in terms of endurance, alcohol can actually impact the production of ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate, and that's the energy store for muscles. So if you think about what's actually going on, the rate of ATP production actually decreases. So if you're trying to do something that is aerobic, that requires endurance, ATP is pretty important, and alcohol can actually reduce the rate at which that's developing inside of your body, and it's gonna take a hit on your endurance. In terms of reaction time, this is maybe obvious or not so obvious, but alcohol is actually a sedative. So oftentimes there's a misunderstanding about what alcohol actually is because there are things that are stimulants and there are other things that are depressants. So if you have a coffee, which is a different kind of drug, that is a stimulant. So if you have something that has caffeine, the caffeine is a stimulant. Alcohol is a depressant. Now it does really depend on your environment, how your body will respond, but chemically it's actually depressing your body and that impacts your performance for up to 72 hours, which means your reaction time and your ability to make judgment calls using your body will go down. We know in swimming what reaction time means off of the block. Yes, if you were a drunk swimmer, you're going to have a much slower reaction time off of the block. Of course, you should not be drinking and swimming at the same time, but that's a whole nother story. It's also important to remember that muscle growth takes a hit because alcohol reduces testosterone and testosterone is something that's needed in both men and women for muscle growth. So if you're trying to grow muscle, which is probably why you're watching this video, you're trying to improve your performance and health, yeah, you're gonna take a hit on muscle growth. In terms of hydration, we're gonna talk more about this in a little bit, but alcohol reduces the production of the antidiuretic hormone, which causes you to pee more, and then you become more dehydrated. So it's actually reducing this hormone, which means you're just gonna end up peeing more, 
and therefore you have less fluid in your body. And because your body's not retaining that fluid that it needs, you're going to be dehydrated more quickly when you have alcohol in your system. In terms of recovery, alcohol can ne negatively impact your sleep because of the HGH, that's a human growth hormone, that's going to decrease. So this is all related in terms of recovery and sleep, which we'll talk about, because if you're not able to get enough sleep, you're not able to get the right amount of HGH, and therefore your recovery is going to get slower. In terms of memory, alcohol can impact your hippocampus, so that's like the front of your head, and that has to do with memory. So this is the part in the brain that's associated to memory. So in terms of impact, it basically just makes your memory worse. So if you are under the influence of alcohol, you're going to have a worse memory. The other thing that's important, I talked about sleep, is that memory is actually formed when you're sleeping. So if something happens in your life during the day, you study for a test, you have things on your mind. When you go to sleep is one that's kind of like cemented in your mind. And if you have alcohol in your system, it's basically just gonna make that run much more inefficiently. In terms of sleep, we mentioned that a lot, Alcohol disru disrupts your normal sleep cycle. So your body has a natural cycle, you go through REM sleep, you have different phases, and you repeat those cycles over the course of your sleep, and alcohol kinda just screws that up. So what happens is you might be able to sleep for a long period of time, if you have alcohol in your system, but the actual cycles of proper sleep and recovery are thrown out the window. So what that means is you're going to have a less efficient sleep cycle, and this happens especially if you have alcohol within six hours of actually going to sleep. So if you have alcohol and then you go to sleep right away, that's going to mess up your sleep cycle the most. If there's a longer period of time between the alcohol consumption being in your system and when you go to sleep, then your sleep is going to be less impacted. In terms of nutrition, alcohol has on average about seven calories per gram. So if you wanna break it down on a chemical level, alcohol is actually not converted to glycogen. So unlike the food and other things that you eat and drink, that is converted to glycogen and then you can use that to fuel your body. Instead, what happens with alcohol, it is actually converted into fatty acids and then those fatty acids are actually stored as fat. So normal food that you eat will eventually become fat if it's not used, but alcohol can't even be digested and converted into glycogen, so it just automatically becomes fat. So if you're trying to be chiseled and you wanna be really, really cut, Alcohol is not working in your favor. And then in terms of your brain, it actually impacts the production of the neurotransmitter GABA. These neurotransmitters, along with other neurotransmitters, are really, really important for keeping your mental health in check. So what happens if someone becomes dependent on alcohol and they have to drink it all the time, you're actually gonna change your brain's chemical patterns. You're not gonna produce the right amount of GABA because the alcohol is basically supplementing what you're used to. So if you were to stop drinking the alcohol and your body is let off of that, you're gonna have these withdrawal symptoms and that's really gonna mess with your mental health because these are the neurotransmitters that are associated with things like anxiety. So you can actually make all of these things a lot worse with, the, with alcohol because of the neurotransmitter GABA. Now these are all the different ways that alcohol can negatively impact your performance, but I actually think there's one that's above all of these, and that is messing with your routine. Now we talked about your, the physiological reasons why alcohol can impact your performance, but I believe that your routine is really the most important thing in your day. I mean, if you think about it, there's only 168 hours in the week. We all have the same amount of time. If you're not at your best self for let's say 48 or 72 hours of the week, there's only 168 hours of the week. So if you do the math on that, basically you're gonna be between 28 and 42% of your week not at peak performance. And if you're trying to be really good at anything, whether it's swimming, business, life, school, whatever, if you're not at your best, well then you're just giving yourself a disadvantage. So just think about that when it comes to how much time it actually takes away from your existing routine. And that's why some of the top performers in any craft actually abstain from alcohol either for periods of time or altogether. Now let's talk about hydration, not alcohol hydration. We're talking about water and other things that really hydrate your body. And this is according to the American Council on Exercise. I wanna talk about how much fluids water you should drink before, during, and after your exercise. So we already know 
if you're going to do exercise or competition, alcohol is not gonna help you out. So make sure if you are going to consume, you have a very big length of time and you drink responsibly. But let's talk about water. So when it comes to before, you should have 17 to 20 ounces of water two hours before your swim or your exercise, whatever you may be doing. Now it's really important when you think when you see these kinds of stats, that doesn't mean go and chug two and a half cups of water and eight ounces of water is one cup of water. It doesn't mean you just go and chug two and a half cups. You wanna be drinking in moderation and you wanna make sure that you are maintaining a level of hydration that is consistent throughout the day. So that by two hours before your swim, you will have had enough fluids to get you into the pool and through that work out. Now, while you're doing your swim, during the activity, you should have anywhere from seven to 10 ounces of water every 10 to 20 minutes of workout, which means basically a cup every 15 to 20 minutes. So if you're swimming for a, a full hour session and you're really training hard, you're going to lose a lot of fluid and you gotta make sure you are hydrating appropriately through the course of that workout. And then after the swim, you should drink between 16 and 24 ounces of water for every one pound of fluid loss. This is difficult to measure because you're probably not gonna weigh yourself before and after your swim. For all of our friends outside the United States, 2.2 kilograms is equal to one pound. So for a kilogram, simply double this number. You're probably not losing a full kilogram in only you know 20 or 30 minute workout, but it's important to remember that you should be hydrating all the time. It's not when you're hungover or if you're really dehydrated. If you're already feeling thirsty, it means you're already dehydrated. So you don't necessarily wanna feel thirsty at any time. You might feel thirsty, but that doesn't mean that you should go and chug a bunch of water. You wanna to continue to have fluids in moderation, whether it's water or some other sports drink. Hope you guys found this video informative. Let me know what questions you have down below in the comments. And if you like this video, you're gonna love what happens to your body when you swim? I'll catch you guys over there and happy swimming.